All right, attempt number two. We get, I guess, some okay cards. All right, maybe. So that makes white and blue look okay-ish. Moth Rider, I'm assuming, is good. Regent's Authority seems interesting. Air of Enlightenment seems decent. Kitsune Ace seems okay. Michiko's Reign of Truth seems sketchy. Wanderer's Intervention seems okay. Imperial Subduer seems okay. Kyodai seems okay. Befriending the Moth seems okay. Imperial Oath seems okay. Brilliant Restoration seems bad. March of Otherworldly Light feels okay. So we got like 12 playablish white cards. Disruption Protocol is not stellar. Mnemonic Sphere is okay. Mobilizer Mech is probably okay. Probably makes Imperial Unit better, actually, if we end up playing Mobilizer Mech. Planar Incision doesn't seem great. Short Circuit seems fine, but not exciting. Reality Chip seems decent. Suit Up seems good. Thirst for Knowledge which seems okay. Anchor to Reality, I guess, snags Reality Chip. That's probably not good. I don't like Michiko's. I don't know that Michiko is a card I would automatically run. It seems like it would be based on the number of enchantments and artifacts I have in a deck. Maybe it's easier to have, like, a couple. I guess it pumps it with itself, doesn't it? Maybe that's okay. The creature might be fine, even if the effect isn't. Do we have the big car for anchor? Is there like a big colorless artifact? We got a shrine. <laughs> Michiko is powerful. All right, I'll believe it. Do we really think Brilliant Restoration is good? The seven drop? I mean, maybe. I guess more creatures in this set are actually enchantments than I'm used to. Like, in most sets, this would be completely useless, but maybe that's not the case here. Okay, blue also has this. 6-6 six, six flyer for 6 is probably playable in most sets. 3-3 three, three flyer for 4, probably playable in most sets. Ooh, Moonsnare Specialist seems good. Two of them? Okay, okay. I mean, that actually sort of looks like a deck already. I'm assuming I'm... When we were young and brilliant, restoration seemed interesting in this kind of a list. What are my artifact and enchantment counts at? Is this everything? Yes. So three artifacts, five enchantments, so eight total. I don't know if that really sells me on brilliant restoration. And that's with running questionable cards like Mobilizer Mech that I probably shouldn't actually be running. I could play Terrariums, technically. Yeah, I don't know that I'm sold on that idea. I could play Short Circuit as another enchantment, but I don't think I'm running Brilliant Restoration. So, alternatively... When We Were Young might be playable. Black has Soul Ripper. Prowler seems decent. Reckoner's Bargain seems playable-ish, but not excellent. Depth of the Kami seems fine. Assassin's Inc. seems fine. Terrible Secret seems fine. But there's like, other than Soul Ripper, nothing super powerful that draws me into that, I don't think. Red has Rabbit Battery. Silken's on Smelter. Eh, Shattered States era could be like vaguely interesting. Bronze Plate Lore, seems fine-ish. Doesn't look like anything terribly exciting. Green has... Goshentai, Tales of Master Seshiro, Careful Cultivation, eh, Silver Form Master, eh. All right, well, it feels like we're probably just in blue-white for sure. Sealed is just about card quality. I don't know that I agree with that. Very often, Sealed becomes about being more aggressive when your card quality doesn't match up to greedy decks. I tend to operate under the assumption that I'm supposed to try to build the most aggressive deck possible unless there's something 
extremely greedy you can do instead. And this doesn't feel like there's anything extremely greedy I can do. I, I don't really have any bombs in any other colors that are worth splashing compared to just having better color fixing. Because the only other bombs I have are Soul Ripper and maybe Assassin's Inc. And those aren't splashable because Soul Ripper wants to be played on turn two to be useful. Okay, let's put that in. Yeah. Okay, no, you're going to make me put lands in first. Okay, lands. This would be easier if I could actually see my curve. Okay, done, and go back. <sighs> so what do we have in terms of evasive threats? Kairi, sort of. Fish, sort of. Kyodai, sort of befriend the moths. Sort of imperial subduer, although probably not often. Sort of mobilizer mech. I'm probably not supposed to be playing Mobilizer Mech, huh? With your cards, it's better to go green, white, and splash blue. I didn't see anything in green that looked like it pulled me into green. Seshiro's fine. Season of Renewal, Careful Cultivation are fine. Goshen Dye is fine. I feel like my blue cards are just much stronger than that, though. Thirst for Knowledge, Suit Up, Reality Chip, Moon Snare Specialist, 4 mana 3-3. Three, three. Mashuera, I want Kitsune Ace. It is a 2-2. Two -two. It is unfortunate that it can't actually pilot Mobilizer Mech, but... A 2-2 two -two Vanilla is a creature that is allowed to attack. I mean, it, it, it's not a card I'm excited to run, but my alternatives here don't seem like they exist. Splashing Season might be worth it. What card is Season? Season of Renewal? Really? Does that card actually seem good? I don't feel like I'm going to have a very easy time getting an enchantment in the graveyard for it. I have a pretty difficult time believing Splashing for a regrowth that's that slow is something that I want to be doing. We already have the enchantments for it, but I don't have any good enchantments. I have Befriending the Moths, Golden Tail Disciple... Michiko, which maybe is good, Era, that's maybe good, but, like, these aren't cards that matter on turn 12. The creatures, sort of. Like, the only enchantment that matters is Tamiyo's Completion on turn 12, and that's, ironically, not an enchantment that's going to have an easy time going to the graveyard. I feel like just having to run tap lands and then off-color lands is going to make the deck worse than the benefit that Season of Renewal would probably provide when my game plan is already kind of to be more aggressive than the opponent anyway and hope to get in the last points of damage with flying. Michiko sort of matters on turn 12. Yeah, I think that is the one enchantment that's decent, but the fact that I don't have any more than that is kind of not exciting. Format's very slow. Well, I think that there are times in general with Sealed, and this is operating on obviously like literally zero knowledge about the context of this format, but... This is a truth of every sealed format that has ever existed before this that I will leave to the viewer to decide if it applies to this format. Every other sealed format that has ever existed is a slow, grindy, splash your bomb sealed format. According to like 95% of players who are wrong and that if it is a... If a format is slow and grindy and you do not open a pool that can go above average slow and grindy, you need to build the best aggro deck your pool can build. If your objective is to go 7-2 and two in terms of like trying to make it to day 2 of a Grand Prix or make it to day 2 of an Arena Open, where getting fewer than 7 wins means nothing. It, I, there's a difference between optimizing for win rate on the ladder and trying to like play sealed decks and get your win rate up from 58% to 60% and trying to maximize for the ability to 
Spike to, I guess, Hyrule into Seven Winds. And it is much harder to Hyrule into Seven Winds with a deck that is slow and grindy and reliable, but worse than every other deck that everyone else is doing to also build slow and grindy and reliable. R right, right. And I think you will find, and this is my, not necessarily even saying that I'm right, just saying this is a viewpoint to consider when evaluating sealed formats in general. I think that the vast majority of players underrate aggro and overrate being grindy and card advantagey and bomby because that is uniquely better on ladder. And I, we tend to have this conversation in general every single time an arena sealed open comes up. And I'm like trying to beat the drum of it's better than you think to go aggro. And I feel like I've been doing that for like every set for the past six sets. <laughs> If a format is slow, it, it tends to be that more players will end up trying to be hyper greedy. And you don't, it, it's very difficult to beat players trying to be, okay, let me restart. If the, pro, if the public perception is that a format is greedy, then the typical response is that more players try to be more greedy to out greed out mid-range the rest of the pools. And that also tends to mean that unless you have an extremely good mid-range pool that can go just excellent greed, that you're just setting yourself up to lose the, to every deck that has a better greedy deck than you. So unless you have an, a truly above-average greedy deck, it's better to go lean instead and the more people think a format is about being greedy, the more correct it becomes to be aggro instead. Because unless there's some element of, like, all the removal is super cheap and effective and aggro creatures are just garbage, like, if that's the case, then, yeah, it gets pretty hard to be aggressive. But a deck with good aggressive creatures actually gets... It, it, they become less common that you can build a good aggressive deck, but it becomes better to have a good aggressive deck in that case. I'm trying to debate if I want when we were young. Mellow well, well. Thanks for the sub. I appreciate the support. We need the consistency in aggressively mulligan. Hmm. I do hate aggressively mulliganing. You make a good point. And unfortunately, I don't actually have very many creatures that are capable of being aggressive. Which does mean this is sort of more of a dirtily deck, unfortunately. But yeah, I don't think I can splash for anything that makes this a better dirtily deck, really. I don't think I can splash for anything that makes it a better aggressive deck either. Which turns us into a position where we're actually a deck that's about trying to get damage in early and then finish the game with tempo and flyers, which is pretty typical of blue. But that also makes me pretty interested in playing when we were young. Pump spells generally become slightly better in that case. The big problem with this deck is I don't have enough two drops that are aggressive. Additionally, I'm pretty sure I just hate Mobilizer Mech, which is unfortunate because it's a two drop that's sort of aggressive. No, I guess it flies. It's like bad, and we don't have a lot of ways to crew it on turn three, but I should probably still jam it. It pseudo gives haste to my other flyers, I guess. But I really need to play when we were young, I think. Am I supposed to cut Befriending the Moths? Is Befriending the Moths not actually good? Or at least do I have too many four drops already anyway? Probably. The alternative is cutting Kitsune Ace, but I really don't want to cut a two drop. How much time on the clock? I actually don't know. Uh, probably about two, two and a half hours. All right, let's just ship this and see what happens. <sighs> Painful. Not allowed to mulligan, though. Do we cycle the mnemonic sphere here or try to get the draw to? I 
I'm probably supposed to go for a draw too. Oh, Drew Lands, Stellar. So if I play Mnemonic Sphere here, then I'm playing Golden Tail next turn. I think that means I'm supposed to play Moth Rider Patrol. Still probably not supposed to cycle the Sphere. So at the very least, discarding it to Thirst for Knowledge is better, I think. And Snare Specialist seems cool. Oh, that's the animation that plays when you can ninjutsu something? Cute. Kami's Flare, sure. Ugh, Searchlight Companion. <sighs> that's awkwardly good. I don't want to bounce it, but it's perfectly positioned to handle my 1-1 flyer. I suppose I can just play Moonsnare Specialist, bounce the 1-1. I could also just Mnemonic Sphere. I can Mnemonic Sphere and March. Oh no, this has like a CMC of infinity. Thirst can still be powerful later on though when I start flooding out because discarding two lands isn't terrible. And I feel like using my Mnemonic Sphere here is a better use of my mana. Huh. Okay. I could march the token. Then they have to sacrifice their 1-1 flyer. It's a more mana efficient use of march than I'm likely to get otherwise. But I can also just Moon Snare Specialist the... Oh, no, they're going to sack the token. Right. So if I march the token, they sack Searchlight, I sack Moth Rider, we Moon Snare the Grave Lighter. That's okay ish. Not an exciting use of mana, though. But unfortunately, at this point, we're actually trying to out card advantage our opponent because the aggro plan has failed. Oh, hey, look, a bunch of lands. Well, it's. It's definitely stuff I can discard to Thirst for Knowledge. Lizard Blades. That's not good. So I can bounce Grave Lighter, I guess. Which really isn't exciting. Could also draw more lands, which really isn't exciting. Well, this seems pretty awful thus far. More searchlight companions. Okay. If I draw, like, one flyer, I'm in pretty good shape here. Or I could draw lands instead. It's not quite as good, but... Eh. I'm assuming I'm supposed to march the Lizard Blades here. Otherwise, they're just going to keep re-equipping it to random other stuff. Unfortunately, it's a relatively fast clock when we were young is more or less totally useless and ironically would be extremely good as a moth right now Not like actually good enough, but at least amusingly decent If it flipped faster I have what literally nothing in my deck that can Come back from this I guess tech Technically, Reality Chip might be capable of doing something? Maybe? Costs three mana to equip. So I'm operating under... If we hit a land... Then I'm gonna have four mana. 
What can I do next turn on two life with four mana to stay alive? Wouldn't have an enchantment for when we were young. Do I have any way to gain life? I don't think so. I think that results in me just being guaranteed dead. Or I could be dead right now. That works too. That feels mostly like drawing 10 lands is bad. I think. <laughs> okay, so we thought we should play Befriending the Moths, and what do we think we should cut? Certainly that game didn't make When We Were Young look good, but... Alright, this is moderately better. We're on the draw, which hurts, but... Oh, an actual two drop. Okay, now we're curving. I like to see it. This is what? An enchantment creature or legendary creature? Alright, well, that works with Golden Tail Disciple a little bit. I assume I'm supposed to block here. My two twos... Trading with A22 is probably about as much of uh, accomplishing its job as we can expect it to do. Have we gotten to a point where we think that plus two plus two for one mana is bad? That seems unlikely. Because this is one mana plus two plus two with upside. Let's play a fishy. One mana plus two plus two has been good in like every format ever. <laughs> Let's not act like this is insane for me to be saying. Ah, oh, that can put a counter on itself. Yuck. Alright, alright. We will befriend some moths. And unfortunately, I think I'm probably still on blocking duty. It's very low impact, this set. If you're not building aggro, yeah. But, like, ostensibly, this is sort of supposed to be an aggro deck. That might not actually be true, but... That was what I was thinking at the time. Plus, like, this is plus two, plus two with upside. We get to turn our moth into a three, five? Shouldn't that be great? More plus and plus one counters. Yeah, those those. Okay, okay. Well, let's play our 3-2. Let's set up double blocks if the opponent decides to attack with 7 Tail Mentor. I mean, I could Regent's Authority to blow them out. But... I'd rather not if I don't have to. Okay, what kind of combat trick do you think you have in this position, opponent? Oh, cool. Alrighty. Take my two for two where I can get it. Wait, what? Oh, it already dealt damage. I see. Misunderstood. Wait. Wow, that's a strong card. So actually more of a two for three. Huh. Well, I mean... I guess this is still mostly fine. I guess I'm now once again trying to outvalue the opponent. Pretty much every other color besides white and blue was like unplayably shallow and had nothing good worth splashing for. Thirst. I don't really want to discard Mnemonic Sphere. I kind of just want to discard two lands. Suit up's interesting. Okay. I kind of want to suit up the Imperial Moth to block Sunblade Samurai. Maybe I should just play the Mnemonic Sphere and then Wanderer's Intervention instead. 
I would define myself as like extremely unskilled at this format. I have never played it before. So I got like no clue what I'm actually supposed to be playing around. Uh, all right, well, that means that I end up one interventioning the samurai after it attacks alone, which makes me sad that I did not play the sphere. I probably have to cycle the sphere then. I'm not going to get the time to actually get value out of it anytime soon. Okay. Hmm. I assume I'm just supposed to play Moonsnare Specialist and bounce the token. Draw a card. Wow. That's scary. I thought this was like a three-mana creature that put a counter on something. I didn't realize it also just draws cards for free. That's, like, disgusting. Ah, <sighs> suit up would be better if I had creatures, though. That is a challenge here. Alright, time to start getting aggressive then. Probably not correct to bounce guide bot, although it does take up a lot of our opponent's time. Uh, probably supposed to bounce infiltrator. Kyodai seems fun. All right. Probably not going to get to play that this turn, because I think they're going to block with Inkarai's Infiltrator and then activate it, which at least lets me use When We Were Young to good effect. The alternative was playing Reign of Truth and just using Suits Up. And that might have been better, actually. Okay, are you okay with this trade, opponent? I'm okay with this trade. I'm like hyper okay with this trade. That was a decent turn. Okay. I love a two for one. And then we got not still a problem. Unforgiving one, what are you? With an attacks, return a target creature with mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield where X is the number of modified creatures you control. Okay, scary, but no modified creatures yet. All right, let's just play to the board. Oh, okay. Those seem fun. Huh. That kind of makes me want to use suit up here, if possible, in order to get to play the Kyrie next turn. So I could, like, attack with the Moonsnare Specialist here. The trouble with that is if they just don't block, then all I do is two damage with suit up, and it's probably better to Michiko's Reign of Truth anyway. So I'm just going to have to accept not playing the Kyrie next turn, I think. I think that's probably for the best overall. We are pushing through a lot of damage in the short term. And next turn, I still get to play Kyodai, which is pretty solid. Opponent's drawing cards, but we're doing a lot of damage, and we have a lot of flyers. I think we might actually be doing the blue-white thing. Oh, also, our record is wrong. We're like 0-1 right now, yeah? There is Farewell. Farewell exists. I can't play around Farewell. 
so I will not try to. Racing opponent? Well, opponent thinks that Death Touch is going to be good on Moonsnare Specialist. Unfortunately, I have more two-for-ones. For them, specifically. Totally fine for me. <laughs> Virus Beetle makes me discard suit up. I'm okay with that. Opponent gets to draw cards. I don't love that. All right. We get big creature. We get tiny creature. We get attacking with flyers. We get big flyer. They got a Tawashi. I don't think I'm supposed to play around a board wipe because I can't beat them in a long game anyway. Please don't have reach. Please don't have reach. It does not have reach. The skyscraper is not tall. Oh, thank goodness for short skyscrapers. Wow. This hand's like turbo garbage. Hmm. I think I have to mulligan this, but I hate that. Okay. We can keep this. I think it has to be befriending the moths we get rid of. I feel like I need Regions Authority to buy back some tempo. Just from, you know, being on the draw naturally. Soul Ripper. Oh, that's horrifying. Okay. Only creatures, not artifacts. That sucks. Ah, oh, Soul Ripper on two is very good. Okay. Wait, what? That's it? Okay. I'll take it. I don't want lands. Do I want suit up? Probably not. Okay, well. We're kind of currently engaging in neutral amounts of card advantage, but technically at some point I might be able to ninjutsu Kitsune's. Or my opponent could decide to sacrifice a land. Draw one. Wait, why two? Oh, this is an enchantment on my side. Right, okay. But, sure. I think we just pass here and then probably march the Mukatai Soul Ripper on their turn. But, what on earth did they. What could they possibly have that makes it correct to sack a land drop? I'll give my opponent the opportunity to sack something to the Soul Reaper. I don't think there's any world in which they ever do, but why not give them the chance? Okay. Imperial Oath is probably okay. We get to play Katsune Ace. We get to Ninjutsu Katsune Ace back to our hand. Remove the enchantment. Do extra damage. Tempo our opponent. Replay Katsune Ace. 
That's probably fine. Back to action. What does that do? No, my six drop. All right, well, time to tempo. Unfortunately, none of my creatures have flying, which is a little awkward. Gains lifelink until end of turn. Rude. Yeah, that means I trade with it if they attack. No! Opponent! Cards! Gross. Ah, oh, that's actually, like, wicked hard for me to handle. Yeah, I can just draw more creatures, though. That works. I could just find more removal, though. Twould be unideal. It's trying, gaining life. Rough. Ideally, I find another Moonsnare specialist, I think. Or they could just find more removal. Okay. Yeah. Still tough. So much life gain. Very painful. I think I'm still supposed to attack, though. Jeez. I didn't think the samurai archetype was real, but sealed is not where I expected it to become extra real. I guess the aggro plan is gone. <laughs> hey, I was gonna say, Kyrie would be a cool card to draw. Does that mean I can attack with everybody now? I think that means I can attack with everybody now. You know, as long as they don't have exile-based removal for Kyrie. Any removal that's not exile-based, please. Or not removal at all would also be cool. Yeah, they could also play another Intercessor's Rem uh, Arrest. Would be bad. We would like them to not do that. What happens when this thing dies? Total mana value six or less. Okay. Presumably this is just them trying to gain life to not be dead in the air. So I swing with everybody, I do eight damage, which isn't really very useful. So I think we're just doing the thing where we attack. Hey, Miguelas. I'm guessing. <laughs> Not entirely sure to pronounce that. Thanks for the raid. How'd the stream go? It's one black kills something that's damaged to draw a card. Oh. Right, right, right. Uh, I think that'd be fine. I mean, they were dead if they didn't swing with something, so they definitely needed to gain life and just onboard naturally regardless. Hey! Minch Kuduri, burp 93. Pedro Sosa. I'm guessing the 7 is an S. Thanks for following. Glad you enjoyed the stream. We decided not to kill the Kairi. Okay. But your selfless samurai still has to attack and die. Otherwise, you die to my flyer. Right, and the hand has to stay back to block. Otherwise, I can just not do anything. But in the meantime, yeah, I'm going to guess that I'm supposed to double block. Yeah, 
I'm kind of curious. I feel like they could have killed the Kyrie there. Was there some way in which me blocking and having the Kyrie die prevented gave me a lethal? I don't think so. Because couldn't they just replay the Selfless Samurai? I guess then they'd have to chump block with the Selfless Samurai, which probably isn't winning anyway. Mill six cards, then return two instants or sorceries. I mean, I'd be getting back Imperial Oath and March of Otherworldly Light. This block or not is actually a really interesting question. With two cards, how likely are they to kill me if I don't block? Some kind of ninjutsu effect, but hand comes down as not a creature. Imperial Subduer removes one blocker on its own when attacking for lethal. Life Link turns it into a six power Life Linker, puts them to nine. I think when we were young forces me to not block. Because if I block and then they win we were young, I'm in kind of, not a like unwinnable shape, but a rough spot. Oh, Moth Rider. Yeah, a flying chump blocker also puts me in a really rough spot if I block. Okay. Oh, I kind of lucked out. So now I actually don't swing with the Kyrie, I just swing with the Subduer. And tap down the Moth Rider patrol. Woo! That actually. Wow. Extremely rewarded for not blocking. Glad I took the time to think that through. I will take it. All right, that puts us at what, two and one? Yes. Made the right play for the wrong reasons. I mean, yeah, I didn't think about what happens if they have a flying chump blocker, but I suppose if they have a flying chump blocker, my life total is still at eight, so I'm not dead on the next turn. So in a way, that was sort of like just playing around a removal spell for the flyer. Okay, well, that seems good. I don't need blue mana. <laughs> We're on a white deck now. Deals one damage to defending player, okay. The mono white continues. Are you a samurai randomly? No, you're a warrior. Do you care about warriors? Yeah. Why is this a warrior and not a samurai? What exactly is the nuance there? Do I even want blue lands? I mean, I probably have blue cards in my deck, so I guess we should probably take the first island, even if I don't need them. Fourth land also kind of useful for casting Kyoda, I suppose. Ooh, a 1-1 one -one with modular. Spicy. On the off chance the opponent has the ability to give this a reach, let's tap it down. Suit up on Moth Rider Patrol is probably a surprisingly decent combat trick. No, don't kill my subduer. I need that for attacking you with, opponent. Do you think the opponent tries to double block the Subduer? You think I get to get like a 2 for 0 with Kyodai? No. Not today. What does Twin Shot Sniper do? How much does that cost? Oh no. Well, apparently it costs four, and it does two damage to something. Except it doesn't. Because I have the curve out. Do, 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 do. 
Befriending the moths, huh? I assume I'm just supposed to ride with suit up here. Interesting they chose to block the 2-2 two, two over the 1. Well, I guess, yeah, that actually does make sense, doesn't it? Okay. Got a monkey. It's pumped. It's pumpkin. <sighs> oh, that's cute. Containment construct lets you discard lands to play them. What value? All right, let's see. Guess we better befriend our Imperial Subduer so that the opponent can't block it with the Simeon Sling and then just keep turning sideways. Yeah, all right. Oh, they actually had to chump block there, didn't they? <laughs> ah, delightful. <sighs> On the other hand, the mono blue curve out is a little weaker, isn't it? Kyrie's pretty tempting, though. Do we, like, keep it just on the strength of that? It's not like you really need to do anything before turn four and limited. Eh, yeah. It's not like I said we're an aggro deck or anything. Mulliganing basically isn't allowed, so, like... Also, we can just top deck a two-drop on curve. That works. Mm -hmm. Well, Yodai is cool too. Meet you go on two is wrong. You think? I don't think doing nothing on two is better. I don't need value, I need tempo. Besides, I've got a ninjutsu creature in hand that can bounce it anyway. And with suit up, just having a creature in play provides me value anyway. It's not even tempo? It, it is absolutely tempo. Not playing something on two is losing tempo. And having a creature in play is gaining tempo, even if it's not currently a strong creature. What happens if I block opponent? You'd be okay with it? Really? <sighs> All right, well, what happens if I Kyodai then? Okay. <laughs> they decide to kill the 1-1 one -one to save the Patrick Automata? Oh, okay, they just kill everything. Sure. I guess that's fair. Middly kind of annoying. But I guess we got Kami's flares out of their hand? Three three is annoying, but six six is cool. I do like a six six with ward three. We hope the opponent can't answer it. Okay, you got a three mana removal spell, opponent. Can Moonsear Specialist bounce my stuff? Yes, it can. That's absolutely delightful. Kind of slow to bounce a 6-6 that gets Intercessors arrested, but I can Imperial Oath in the meantime, at least. I don't love taking 7 damage in that scenario, but hey, opponent wants to do nothing. I'm okay with that. Awful tempting to just Imperial Oath here and not really block the Ryu. I mean, actually, I guess I can just block the Ryu, can't I? Because it only does three damage. Uh, yeah, you know what, all those seem good. 
We're going to put them back in the exact same order we just found them. March of Reckless Joy. Okay, opponent's got some cards. They get to play Born to Drive and Reign to Truth. Probably totally fine with that. They played a land? Opponent. That's not really... Okay. Unfortunately, that Reign of Truth on the Ryu is actually sort of decent, though. Okay, no blocks. Also, no blocks. Hmm. Well, Sunblade Samurai is not the worst thing in the world. Okay. So we're going to bounce the Sunblade Samurai, combat and swing with everybody, suit up if they block something with Ryu, draw a card, kill our opponent's creature, only now remember to check whether it was lethal to pump something else, but it was not. I feel relatively comfortable here. Like, farewell would be annoying. But that's about the only thing I think I'm scared of here. That's not farewell. Am I willing to mass block here? Yeah. Interesting to choose not to kill the Vigilance creatures. I suppose it probably doesn't matter too much. Alright, well, let's get rid of their blocker. And... Pump creature. I mean, I'm pretty sure because my 6-6 six -six has Ward 3, I'm fine regardless. But, I don't know. Might as well play around them having some way to remove it. All right. Well, somehow this deck has already done better than the extremely good green-white deck. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to keep playing my flying 6-6 aggro deck. Do we cycle this sphere? I can play it on two, but I actually kind of just want... Eh, I should probably try to get a little more value. On turn four, I can crack it to try to keep making land drops up to six. I think that's more important than playing Befriend the Mods on Curve. Dragon Spark Reactor. Is that a good card? Maybe? I don't know. If you move on to day two, is there a new sealed draft or do you keep the same deck? Um, there is an actual draft, not sealed. And just the one. And it, yes, it is a new deck. Full control. Well, no, I, I can't afford to Wanderer's Intervention this thing after damage. Oh, I should have cracked Mnemonic Sphere before combat. If I hit the untapped land, I could Wanderer's Intervention post-combat here. I didn't think about that. That was better. Yeah. Mistake. Well, I, mean, I guess I can still do it on their turn when they attack. So that's not really actually a concern. Oh, but that apparently has randomly mana ramp? So it was strictly better to do it on my turn. All right, misplay. I should read cards. You're definitely supposed to attack here, right, opponent? Okay. Interesting. The implication there is they just don't have a five drop in their deck? Or, well, hand. Equal to the number of charge counters. Not even twice the number of charge counters? Wild. So I could march the Song Shaper, or I could just cast Befriending the Moths and not really do anything else here. I think I'm probably not supposed to cast Befriending the Moths because I feel like my opponent's probably going to try to kill my Golden Tail here, and I get to blow that out.
So I get to like super blow this out? I guess not super blow it out, it's just A2 for three. So moderately decently blow it out. All right, that works for me. Oh, with Anvil. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Oh no. Oh, I see. Because they wanted to draw a card with Kami is why they did that. That makes sense. Anyway, I'm going to play my 6-6 six, six now. You got a 3-mana removal spell for a 6-6 six, six opponent? Ooh, the fun part is that I get to get back March of Otherworldly Light and Wanderer's Intervention if they kill it. Ink would work. Yep. Tribute to Hirobi. Okay, I get a rat. I gotta figure out how to kill that rat somehow. Hmm. Okay, I think I'm supposed to play Befriending the Moths. Do we want to leave the rat back to block or do damage with the rat while we're trying to race? Just at my face? Oh, both. Oh, 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 Okay, this is better than I thought. I didn't realize it did both. I thought it was one or the other. Sure. Oh, I can attack anyway, though, because I get the rat on there before attack step. Probably supposed to thirst for knowledge here. Are you sure you're supposed to let me kill a rat opponent? I don't think that's how tribute to Hirobi works, but maybe. I draw a card. Okay. Well, that's going to make my Kyrie better, because now they're down a land drop. Suit up and when we were young. Is that lethal? Seven. That seems like that's lethal. Do we go for that? Yeah, why not? All right. Do we get there on Flying Rat Lethal? I really hope they have two mana deal three damage to something. Mm, okay, good to know Ace is fine. It's a f artifact Flying Rat. <laughs> Wait, it turns into an artifact? So we get lifelink? <laughs> oh, the synergies. I didn't realize that. Oh no! March to stay alive! Wow, alright. I mean, I'm still at 33 life, but... Yeah, that was good. Alright, well now how are we answering the 6-6 opponent? Yeah, valid. All right. Wow. It, it didn't matter, but I'm really glad that I ended the game at 27 life. <laughs> Record five and one. Okay, Air of Enlightenment seems good. We'll keep. Socks is an outdoor cat? No, but I, I'm shut up in my room with all the doors closed and we grabbed him earlier at the start of the stream and then allowed him out of my room. <laughs> Do I keep Wanderer's Intervention? It's sort of tempo. Nah, I want creatures.
Another tribute to Hirobi. That's awkward. Okay, Regent's Authority on Air of Enlightenment is at least decent. Maybe. The, the tribute to Hirobi is going to be pretty bad for me. Okay, I think I have to discard Regent's Authority here. I think I'm going to Tamiyo's Completion the tribute to Hirobi. It would have been cool to top deck the Bounce Ninja so that I could do damage and then bounce both of my rats. But now they are the opponent's rats. Do not want the opponent doing a bunch of damage to me and drawing a bunch of cards. Not the life we're about. Okay, that's brutal. So, land drop, flying creature. Kami of Terrible Secrets is wicked strong. Stop gaining life! Stop playing good cards! Yep. Wish they hadn't virus beetled away my pump spell. That'd be a really good spot to use it. Okay, so I gotta beat the opponent having like infinity cards. This is going to be difficult. For the most part, I think our plan is have an indestructible blocker and attack for six in the air for three turns in a row and just hope that's good enough. You know, a world in which the opponent never finds removal or anything. As tempting as it is to play Kyodai on the Sky Swimmer, I don't think that actually accomplishes much. I think I'm just going to need the Indestructible Blocker to stop them from attacking me. Yeah, Gogari having removal sounds super unlikely, right? We can hope. I'd like to not get two for one here. Eh, we got two for one here. What a shame. I think I had to do that. I can't sit around and play around removal. Bankbuster just beats me in the long game too easily. Oh, right. Reality Chip is a card in our deck. Huh. Interesting. I forgot about that. Did everyone else forget about that too? Jeez. Okay, well... The fact that they removed the eel in response to the reality chip kind of implies they have more removal, which is horrifying. Like, I can't really beat that. Kami um, turns into a 4-5. That's pretty awful. It's weird that they chose to remove the Sky Eel and then didn't remove the Reality Chip. Huh. Somehow I think I'm on plan try to out aggro my opponent, and I have no expectations that can possibly succeed, but here we are. 
Mikatsune's is thick, at least. Technically, I'm only two damage off lethal if my opponent doesn't do anything at all. Mm. Vigilant Rat. So if I block a 1-1, one, one, the opponent does 8 damage, puts me to 7. If I block a 2-2, two, two, I can lose a reality chip to them. Playing minus 2, minus 2 on reality chip, and I actually need reality chip in play because it pumps the ace. Gain two life. No. Land drop. No. All right. I think in this position, I'm actually pumping the reality chip because I need a blocker, and I also need to equip the reality chip to something. Well, they should have tapped the Kitsune Ace after I attacked with reality chip, so... At least they misplayed. But I'm probably still dead. Yep, all right. <laughs> I am dead. Okay, okay. Um, hmm. Well, this is an interesting one. I think we can keep this. Wonder is interventions more of a real two drop when you're on the draw, at least. Oh, but I, no, I just play Reality Chip on two. But, I mean, that's still a curve. No complaints. Tommy of Transients. All right, not something that's super exciting to Wanderer's Intervention early on. Wait, did I have the ability to look at the top card of my library last game when Reality Chip was in play? I didn't realize or notice that I was allowed to? How many tries have I done? This is the second try. Oh, I can shuffle? I mean, I'm probably just supposed to thirst for knowledge discarding Terrarium at some point. But the shuffle effect with Reality Chip is kind of cute. It was always Lance. Oh, I see. No, moths. That makes Kami of Transients big enough to get over my <laughs> Wanderer's Intervention. It's very annoying. Hmm. I kind of need to protect my life total here, don't I? I think that means making a very sad jump block. All right, Moonsnare Specialist. I do not hate bouncing Kami of Transients. Annoyingly, that sort of means not playing anything else here. Because I don't want to shuffle. I mean, I could just play Thirst for Knowledge, discarding Ecologist's Terrarium, I suppose. I could choose not to search. That's probably a bad idea. So I could play Michigo's Reign of Truth and swing for two. Or I could play Thirst for Knowledge. It's probably better off thirsting. How do I bounce? I just cast Moon Snare Specialist. Not this turn, next turn. Right? Doesn't this just do this on ETP? I think. <sighs> Taking much damage. Papercraft decoy. Okay. Yeah. It's actually probably better for me to discard two lands than the Ecologist's Terrarium here. Because I think being able to shuffle when we can see the top card of our library is important. Now 
No, I, I wasn't saying that I was going to play specialist that turn. I was just saying that I didn't need to deal with Kami because I can bounce it eventually with Moonsnare. So, like, trying to prioritize figuring out a timing to play Wanderer's Intervention before it grew over being a 4-4 wasn't a very big concern. Is this cast or ETB? Cast. Okay, so Saga's flipping doesn't add more counters to it. You know, much of the worldly lights, kind of cool. I kind of assume I'm supposed to Tamiyo's completion, the Kami, and then Wanderer's intervention, the Imperial Moth. So I don't think I'm doing anything this turn. Alternatively, equip Reality Chip, march for three to kill Kami. That's probably better card advantage, but it involves me taking more damage in the short term. I think I'm supposed to maximize not taking damage for the time being. Because I think I've got this locked up on card advantage most likely. Okay, Pono, what do you do if I try this? No, 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 no. Actively don't want to kill that thing because I want to Tamiyo's completion it. Oh, but now if they pump it, I guess I can just let damage happen. I take two damage as a result of that. Am I okay with that? This also technically doesn't leave me with a creature to whip on to, but that's fine. No, I think I'm supposed to Intervention Moth. Maybe I was just supposed to Tamiyo's Completion Economy before attacks. Yeah, it was exactly this. Okay. Well, it's rough. But not the end of the world. Oh, and that has Trample? Gross. Oh, okay. Wow, I got extremely blown out. Hmm. Yuck. Can I play this? Yes. All right, well, now I'm behind on resources again. Yeah, it's pretty bad. We're flooding is tough. Jeez. Opponent just living the five land mono threats life, huh? Oh, gosh. Oh, okay. No, that's not going to do it. I kind of need to draw my 6-6 six, six pretty badly. Like, extremely badly. Like, I just lose the game if I don't. Life Linker? Uh, okay, that buys a turn. I guess these transform next turn? Really need the opponent to flood out now. Sheesh. Might have been a good enough turn to draw the 6-6, six, six, but it's not going to do it. Hmm. No trample? No. Okay, no trample. 
That's something at least. Jump block the 6-6, six, six, double block the 5-5. Five, five. I lose my whole board. And then they just play the creature naturally without using the ability. Oh, please! Yes! Alright, so that wasn't actually necessary. They could have just killed both my creatures regardless by killing the Hand of Enlightenment first. And then the Michiko gets smaller. Uh, much better than them actually playing an additional creature as a threat, but also they can just play an additional creature as a threat. And we can draw more lands. Okay. Yeah, alright. That was... Hmm. Should I play around the Wanderer's Intervention on the Reality Chip? We end up in a position where we were massively ahead of the opponent on card draw, and I evaluated that it was better to prevent damage than maximize every source of card draw. The only way that that really punishes me is if we flood in a position where we've already thinned our deck more than the opponent, and they don't draw lands, and they just draw threats, and they have removal spells immediately, to actually kill the reality chip. So the timing on the Tamiyo's completion was definitely a mistake. I was supposed to do it before they swing, because I knew what I was going to hit regardless, and blocking just didn't accomplish anything. So that was definitely a mistake. But once in that position, I think I still agree with the choice to block. The bad case scenario is extremely unlikely, and the good case scenario for blocking which is that they just threaten our life total and we enjoy having a life total that's higher, is the most likely way we lose that game. The resulting us flooding and the opponent never drawing another land and actually managing to outvalue us and having removal spells in the moment, that was by far and away, I think, the correct thing to not play around. Lament the fact that it was the case, but... Yeah, I don't think that was what I was supposed to do.